There are several challenges of um, diagnosing and managing BPSD. One is the diagnosis in and of itself. It's incredibly difficult sometimes to distinguish between delirium and behaviors associated with dementia because they look the same, but they're actually different. The second challenge is that they often coexist, so you often have delirium and behavioral problems in the same population. A third problem unique to the uh, membership of AHPM is how do you actually manage this in hospice, particularly since many hospice patients are managed in nursing homes at the end of life, and nursing homes have very specific federal regulations that govern um, prescribing practices, some of which uh, actually affect the very common ways that we typically treat these conditions. For BPSD, there are um, no FDA-approved medications um, for the treatment of these, of these behaviors. There's a lot of non-pharmacologic uh, treatments, such as trying to minimize the um, environmental distractions, trying to address reasons why they might have agitation. There are some studies showing that certain um, SSRIs, such as Celexa, and also some anti-seizure medications such as carbamazepine that have been shown to possibly mitigate some of the behavior. So those are some drugs that, that can be used, but I think one of the big takeaways is that antipsychotics will not help patients with BPSD and really should not be used, and um, there's a lot of regulatory issues. And that um, in both delirium and B BPSD, it's important to include the family um, to understand how they are viewing the patient's agitation. If sometimes our uh, physician, um, you know, clinician hat is to take a patient that has terminal delirium who's agitated and maybe is babbling nonsense, what we perceive as nonsense, um, we may sort of feel the urge to sedate that patient, um, whereas the family may feel that even though the patient's agitated, making these um, statements that to the patient or the family that may have meaning. Sometimes behaviors for folks with uh, late stage dementia actually represent the communication of unmet needs. And this idea that uh, folks with dementia have a praxis issue where they can't really tell you what they need, they can't tell you that they're hungry or they want to go to the bathroom. They, and they'll, when they don't feel understood, they often will get agitated. And this sometimes is underlying some of the agitation that we see. And the, the analogy I like to use is like when we have children, we have babies, and they're hungry or they need to go to the bathroom. They also don't have the words, but we don't medicate them. We try and understand what their need is, and we meet them where their need is, and we address that, and then the agitation goes away. And we have evidence now that shows that that approach to older folks with dementia also works, that there's an expression of unmet need sometimes, it's not delirium, it's a need, and then when we can understand that and address it, that also the agitation can go away and the need for medicating folks can actually also go away. What we're going to bring to bear is that the regulations have changed, the regulations have changed to reflect the idea that the regulators actually understand that these behaviors are, the, are, are an expression of unmet needs. And what we want to introduce is that the regulators are actually starting to look for this in terms of clinical practice and evidence of this in the nursing home. And I think the next sort of research question is to ask, now that the policies and the regulations have changed, does that actually affect, maybe even improve the care delivery in nursing homes for these folks? And hopefully, at the end of the day, do the families have better outcomes, do the patients have better outcomes, and, and eventually do, do, do all these folks have better deaths?